The Ukraine-Russia war has entered its third year, and this prolonged conflict has demonstrated the remarkable value of drones in military applications. Both Ukraine and Russia have heavily invested in drones, aiming to strike the enemy at a lower cost and reduce their own casualties. For example, in January 2024, Ukraine used a drone costing less than 100,000 U.S. dollars to sink a Russian warship worth 70 million U.S. dollars in the Black Sea. Currently, drones require human control for navigation and decision-making. However, human capabilities are limited and cannot control multiple drones simultaneously. This is where AI can make a significant impact. If AI technology matures, it could command hundreds or even thousands of drones at once, using a swarm tactic to paralyze the enemy's weapon systems and enhance attack and defense efficiency. Faced with AI weapon attacks, the enemy will also implement AI to automate their weapons, increasing their chances of victory. In modern warfare, the advancement of chips is crucial for improving combat capabilities with drones and AI technology. Recently, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has been continuously threatening Taiwan to showcase China's military prowess and sovereignty, sparking discussions about whether President Xi Jinping will attack Taiwan in 2027. In response, the United States has been preparing. Citing national security, the U.S. has implemented chip bans on CCP military technology, restricted AI investments, technology transfers, and sanctioned Chinese suppliers that aid Russia. This can be seen as a chip war that encompasses military, technological, and commercial competition. The broader concern is China's military strength and ambition to launch a war by attacking Taiwan. However, China has started a war it cannot win. China bets on collaborating with countries like Russia and Iran to undermine the U.S.-led global order while hoping to acquire American technology for its development. In reality, China's theft of technology and disruption of global peace has hindered its path to becoming a major power. Do you remember the Gulf War more than 30 years ago? On January 17, 1991, over a hundred American fighter jets and more than a hundred Tomahawk cruise missiles suddenly flew over Iraq, targeting its military infrastructure with devastating precision. Iraq, having just ended an eight-year war with Iran, has substantial military power. However, the anticipated ground and urban battles did not occur on a large scale. Over the course of a month, the U.S. conducted surgical precision strikes with thousands of cruise missiles. How precise? U.S. missiles could enter through chimneys and explode inside Iraqi General Staff Headquarters. Iraq's fighter jets couldn't take off because they would be shot down immediately by U.S. radar-equipped planes with advanced remote controls. This war lasted only 42 days, resulting in over 10,000 Iraqi casualties, while the U.S.-led coalition suffered only 598 casualties. This overwhelming victory was made possible by one core element, the chip. Since then, the role of chips in modern warfare has become significantly apparent. I believe that without Taiwan's chips, China's technology would be inferior. As technology progresses, the gap will widen. For instance, each generation of chips, from 10 nanometers to 7 nanometers to 3 nanometers, improves efficiency by about 30%. The U.S. continues to use the latest technologies like 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers, while China remains constrained by the U.S at 14 nanometers or 12 nanometers. Consequently, U.S. missiles are more accurate and faster. Therefore, the U.S. aims to block China's technological advancements from the source. Since President Joe Biden took office, and after signing the Chips and Science Act in August 2022, it has been described as the start of a full-scale chip war. Biden not only issued significant chip bans to prevent China from acquiring advanced semiconductor chips, technology, and equipment, but also prohibited Americans from working in Chinese chip companies. He also influenced allies to follow suit. For instance, Japan announced in late March that it would restrict the export of 23 types of semiconductor manufacturing equipment, and the Netherlands ASML banned the sale of EUV to China. Additionally, in October 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced a series of chip export control measures. At the end of February 2023, the U.S.-China Strategic Competition Special Committee held its first meeting, focusing on the threat posed by China. It emphasized that the U.S. must actively counter economic and national security threats from the CCP. Committee Chairman Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher stated that the U.S.-China competition is an existential struggle defining the 21st century. Gallagher and the committee's leading Democrat 
Raja Krishnamurti expressed serious concerns in a July 20, 2023 hearing about American venture capital firms investing in China's dual-use military civilian technology. On July 19, they announced that they had sent letters to venture capital firms GGV Capital, GSR Ventures, Walden International, and Qualcomm Ventures, requesting information on their investments in Chinese AI, semiconductors, and quantum computing by August 1st. The letters pointed out that GGV Capital and Qualcomm Ventures had invested in MEG-8 and SenseTime Group, which provide facial recognition technology aiding in the CCP's suppression of Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang. These companies were added to the U.S. entity list in 2019. Qualcomm Ventures also invested in Zongmu, a Chinese autonomous driving startup that is a key technology in China's military-civilian fusion. Walden International invested in SMIC, an AI computing platform, in Telefusion fusion both closely related to the CCP military. Intellifusion also aided the CCP surveillance of Uyghurs, and both were added to the entity list in 2020. GSR Ventures invested in Chinese military enterprises like Horizon Robotics, an AI chip company. Qualcomm Ventures prominently states on its website that since 2003, Qualcomm Ventures has been vigorously supporting Chinese startups in the mobile internet and frontier technology fields. Currently, Qualcomm Ventures focuses on 5G applications and innovative technology technologies, including AI, XR, robotics, and autonomous driving, IoT slash vehicle networking, pushing the vision of intelligent connectivity for everything. Qualcomm Ventures has invested in over 70 Chinese startups, including Xiaomi, Thundersoft, NQ Mobile, Mobike, SenseTime, Amec, Unisound, Huaqin, Zongmu, and Vutrix Tech. Updated restrictions announced on October 17, 2023, the U.S. government explicitly expressed concerns about how China plans to use advanced AI capabilities. China's promotion of supercomputing programs and AI capabilities based on advanced semiconductors has raised U.S. national security concerns. These technologies can be used to enhance military decision-making, planning, logistics, cognitive electronic warfare, radar, intelligence, and jamming. Michael Schumann, a senior journalist, wrote in The Atlantic that nothing better exemplifies the CCP's current predicament than advanced chips, also known as semiconductors. China needs the smallest and fastest chips to achieve its technological superpower dreams, but it neither has the capability to produce them nor the ability to manufacture the extremely complex lithography machines required for their production. The West no longer shares technology with the Chinese Communist Party, and the chip ban is causing Chinese companies to lose their competitive edge. Schumann pointed out that the longer these control measures last, the more painful they will become. As China's access to American chips and equipment becomes outdated and irreplaceable, it will be increasingly difficult for Chinese companies to compete with their American counterparts. Jimmy Goodrich, a senior advisor to the Rand Corporation on Technology and China, told Schumann that over time, China will encounter more and more challenges in maintaining the pace of innovation. He said, export controls are like throwing a wrench into the gears of China's chip industry. And with the rest of the world moving quickly on the innovation ladder, there will be a larger and larger gap between the Chinese and American tech sectors. Schumann stated that communist China might never be able to match the U.S. in chips, let alone surpass it. When Chinese companies reach one goal, their foreign competitors have already moved far ahead. G. Dan Hutchison, vice president of research from Tech Insight, said, Ten years ago, they were two generations behind, five years ago, they were two generations behind, and now they're still two generations behind. The harder they run, they just stay in place. The White House emphasized that these chip control measures are not intended to hinder China's economic development, but to ensure American safety. However, these measures will have broader and more disruptive impacts on China's tech industry, and thus on China's economic future particularly slowing the progress of large language models and other AI developments in China. Building a chip supply chain for a single country in a highly globalized industry could cost up to one trillion U.S. dollars. Hutchison estimated that the cost of manufacturing advanced chips in China is five times that of Taiwan's TSMC, making economic development even more challenging for China. Chinese media Chai Xin believes that if the U.S. restricts investment, the impact on the AI sector could be greater than on the chip sector. This is because U.S. funding is crucial for Chinese AI companies. According to a report by the Center for Security and Emerging Technology, CSET, from 2015 to 2021, as much as 37% of global investment in Chinese AI companies came from American institutions, 
especially in the seed, angel, and venture capital stages. If U.S. investment is restricted, it will be hard to fill the funding gap. Moreover, the U.S. has announced increased sanctions on foreign entities aiding Russia. On June 12th, the U.S. Treasury Department sanctioned over 300 global entities and individuals assisting Russia, including suppliers and intermediaries from China and Hong Kong selling semiconductors, IT products, and laser products to Russia. This move aims to further weaken Russia's military equipment for its war against Ukraine. Additionally, the Treasury Department announced a significant expansion of secondary sanctions against Russia. Any foreign financial institution transacting with sanctioned Russian entities will be seen as directly cooperating with Russia's military-industrial base. The Commerce Department also announced a series of restrictive measures banning the export of U.S. products to certain addresses in Hong Kong that are used to set up shell companies to ship prohibited goods to Russia. Chinese suppliers are, of course, included in these sanctions. Technological innovation is progressing rapidly, and the CCP is losing the race against time. This impacts all aspects of the supply chain. China lacks technology, talent, systems, and strategy. Without advanced technology for high-end chips, China's military weaponry is significantly affected. Take the Ukraine-Russia war, which has been ongoing for three years. This is the first direct conflict between two modernized nations in recent history. Earlier conflicts in this century, such as the Iraq War and the War on Terror, involved high-tech military forces striking lower-tech countries. The Ukraine-Russia war represents the first instance of a confrontation between advanced weaponry. As the war continues, Ukraine has once again called on Western countries to send weapons to resist the Russian invasion. Ukrainian President Zelensky said during a recent NATO meeting that Ukraine needs more modern weapons to break Russia's artillery advantage. He warned that if it doesn't get the weapons needed to, de to defeat Russia, NATO leaders would soon have to face the conflict with Russia themselves. Initially, the approach was to provide weapons that Ukrainian forces were already familiar with. The U.S. and its European allies have used various ways to find these weapons, including Soviet-era tanks, air defense systems, and ammunition. But the stockpiles were nearly exhausted. Therefore, the current trend is to provide new Western-style weapons, hoping this model can be sustained for a longer period. Some military enthusiasts argue that advanced fighter jets like the F-22 and F-35 use mature technology chips, implying that military weapons do not need advanced chips. However, the events in Ukraine and Russia have proven the importance of advanced chips. Without them, weapons become ineffective. China has the second highest military spending in the world and has repeatedly boasted about the performance of its domestically produced weapons, claiming they can rival those of the U.S. and Russia. And has been pushing to export these weapons. However, according to a report by Korean media the Chosen Ilbo, from last year to this year, China faced significant setbacks in three major weapon export deals. Even with Chinese leader Xi Jinping personally intervening, these deals failed. One, Thailand canceled its contract to purchase S-26T Yuan-class diesel submarines from China. Two, Argentina canceled its plan to buy JF-17 fighter jets from China and instead opted to purchase second-hand F-16 fighter jets from Denmark. Three, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates canceled their purchase of China's HQ-9B long-range surface-to-air missiles, which have a range of 300 kilometers, and instead chose South Korea's TSSM surface-to-air missiles with a range of 180 kilometers. Four, according to insiders, Bangladesh. Which has long bought military equipment from China recently criticized Chinese-made military equipment for having defective parts and technical issues. Five other countries like Myanmar are also facing quality issues with Chinese-made fighter jets. Myanmar's air force has grounded the JF-17 Thunder jets bought from China due to poor radar accuracy and the aircraft's lack of beyond visual range interception capabilities. Additionally, the jets suffer structural damage under high g-forces, particularly at the wingtips and weapon mounting points. Defense industry experts say Beijing lacks the expertise to produce cutting-edge military equipment and is not yet seen as a top manufacturer of modern defense gear. They note that most of the weapons are based on outdated technology copied from the West. Richard A. Bitzinger, a researcher at Singapore's Technological University's S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, said that China's weapons exports have not been able to establish a large and reliable customer base abroad. Bitzinger noted that Chinese-made weapons are often of low quality and only hold an advantage in the low-end weapons market, where cost is a primary consideration. 
Consequently, buyers of Chinese weapons tend to make one-time purchases. Emphasized that repeat business is crucial for weapons exporters. For a weapons manufacturer, one key indicator of success is building a large and reliable customer base, which is where China's weapons exports have hit a bottleneck. According to research by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, although China consistently accounts for five percent of global arms exports, this is insignificant compared to Russia's sixteen percent and the United States forty percent. Additionally, only a few countries that buy Chinese weapons continue to do so. Indicating that Chinese weapons are not as popular internationally as expected. Simply put, nobody wants to buy poorly made Chinese weapons. From the perspective of military technology development, traditional weapons like aircraft, ships, and missiles do not have high demands for chip manufacturing processes. However, modern weapons such as drones and AI-based weaponry require significant computational power for analyzing and transmitting data, making computational capabilities particularly crucial. The extent of the impact and limit. Limitations of this requirement are still speculative and need time to be validated. Even so, developing these weapons to a mature state could take many years, during which advancements in chip manufacturing and computing power will become even more evident in their application. These tiny chips are at the core of a 500 billion U.S. dollar semiconductor industry, projected to double by 2030. Whoever controls the semiconductor supply chain. A complex network of companies and nations involved in chip manufacturing holds the key to becoming an unrivaled superpower. However, China's setbacks in chip development have already doomed it to lag in the technological war from the start.